Kia ora te whanau. Today we're going to look at how we can use patterns in our language learning to really reinforce some words that might be a little bit tricky to learn on their own. Um, and we're going to look at how we can use not only the patterns, but how we can come up with our own little triggers that will help us to remember the words that we've learned. Now, what I mean by trigger is just imagine that you know you're walking down the street one day and you there's a street vendor and he's sitting there and he's cooking hot dogs and you cop a whiff of this hot dog and you go, hmm, that really takes me back to that time 15 years ago when I was walking down a street in New York and I could just smell all these beautiful aromas of all this street food and I can just see all the colours, I can see the buildings, I can see the people, I can see all the cars. That scent becomes a trigger for a memory. And we're going to use that same technique for language learning. We're going to look at a couple of little triggers that we can use to really help re-emphasise the words that we're trying to learn. So we've looked at uh, a couple of words in the past that can be a bit tricky and they are tato, tawa, Mato, mawa, rato, rawa, koto, korua. Bit of a mouthful. And they're all different personal pronouns. And for me, I found them to be quite tricky to try and learn at the start when I started learning. So I really want to show you a few triggers that we can use to make learning those words a lot simpler. Let's get into it. So the first trigger I want to look at is really word lengths and associating the length of the word with the meaning of the word. So if you can recall, you might have to go back and check out another video I've done on um, personal pronouns, but basically tato, rato, mato, and koto all refer to different groups of people that have three or more three or more people uh, within that collective. So tato, mato, rato, and goto. Now, the other four words, the, the four words that I guess go with those words are tawa, mawa, rawa, and korua. So I'll type these up quickly. So ta, tato, mato, rato, goto. So they're the words that all relate to three or more people. And the similar words are tawa, mawa, rawa, and korua. So in this instance, what we can do is start associating the length of the word with the amount of people that we're talking about. Now, you still got to go and learn what the difference is between these actual words, between tato, mato, rato, and koto. Pardon me. But really, we want to look at how we can categorize these words. So there's the, the longer words, tato, mato, rato, koto, and then there's the shorter words, tawa, mawa, rawa, korua. So what you can do here is start associating these longer length words. So one, two, three, four five letter words, all these longer words with a larger group of people. So a long word equals a larger group of people. Whereas in these ones, the shorter words, so portal was the exception here, but the shorter words, we can associate the shorter word with a smaller amount of people. And in this case, all of the, these words represent different groups of people that only have two people involved. So just to recap on that, the long word, associate that with a large group of people, three or more people, and the small word we can associate with a smaller group of people, two people. So there are a couple of little uh, tricks you can use. And then the other one is, uh, these are, these, this is probably more of the, tr the, the trigger uh, exercise, and it's where we can apply word associations, uh, say an English word association, to help us memorize our, our Māori words better. So we're gonna look at this 
we'll break this down. Whoops. We'll get rid of that. And we'll start here. So I'll just merge that. Um, so in my notes here, and I, I've posted this on the, the, uh, the Facebook group as well. So if you want to check it out, jump over to the Facebook group. There'll be a link down in the comments section. You can jump over and have a look. Um, and what I've said here is Tato and Tawa, they always include both the person that's speaking and the person that's listening, at least. So Tawa is the person, includes the person that's speaking and the person that's listening. And Tato includes those two people plus everyone else. So a trigger that I've found really well to use is we can associate that with inclusiveness. You know, it's, it's, always, it's always us. It's, it's me, it's the person that I'm talking to, and it's everyone else. So I like to look at a word like together. So when I'm trying to think of uh, a pro this pronoun in te reo Māori, if I can't quite think of the, the te reo words, I can at least think of the description of the words, which is together. And from that word together, I can start to associate that first letter T with these words. Now, if you remember from the screen that was on before, a lot of these words, the second part of the word is the same. It was, so there's tato, mato, and rato, and those three words. It's only that first letter that changes. And same with tawa, mawa, and rawa. So koto and koru are a little bit different, but they're sort of the exception in this case. So I can start to look at, I can start thinking of together, and then I can associate the letter T with these pronouns that relate to togetherness. And that's how I can, I can start to use an English trigger, being together, to learn my te reo Māori words. Next, we can look at mato and māwa. So what's another word for here oh, to, to associate with these two words? I've written here, and these, you, these can be whatever you want, whatever works for you, but um, these are just ones that I've thought of that are somewhat related um, and relatable. So me and my mum. Now, this is not necessarily a word, but it's a phrase. But if I was to say me and my mum to someone, I'm talking about my mum who's not part of this conversation. And that's really what mato and mawa refer to. They're talking about um, me, the speaker, and someone, at least one person that's with me. So with mawa, it's me and, say, my friend, but not the person that I'm talking to. And mato is me and two of my friends, or two or more of my friends, but not the person I'm speaking to. So I can start relating to uh, me and my mum, because when I say that, I'm really talking about me and my mum here, but not you that I'm talking to. And again, I can use that trigger of the, the first letter, M, and start relating it back to these words, mato, mato, and mawa. The next one, rato. So another word I've picked here is runaway. Remember, these can be whatever they, whatever you want them to be, whatever works for you. So rato and rawa always refer to people that are away from our conversation. So if I'm standing here and I'm talking to you, and we want to talk about that group of people over there, we'd say rato, we'd refer to them as rato. If we're talking about, uh, say, two people standing over there, we refer to them as rawa. So my association here, the, the trigger here, is runaway. And I can think, okay, runaway. We're talking about people that have run away. They're gone. They're over there. And that's the association when, with rato and rawa. They're people that are over there. They're not part of our conversation. When I think of a runaway, I think of someone that's gone. They're away from me. They're away from the person I'm speaking to. They're gone. So it's that uh, association with the letter R and someone that's run away, someone that's way over there, and I can connect that to rato and rawa. And the last one, koto 
oops and Korua sorry doing a bit of formatting layout no cells Koto and Korua another phrase I can use here is kids in kindergarten now what the hell does that mean well it can mean whatever you want it to mean but for me kids in kindergarten when i think of kids in kindergarten i think of a bunch of kids that are all sitting down there in front of the teacher and the teachers talking to them the teachers directing them the teachers telling them off the teacher is teaching them and that's really the the relationship that you would have when you're referring to a group of people as koto or korua you're referring to the person you're speaking to and the people that are with them so if i was talking about uh, if i was talking to say my sister and her boyfriend i'd refer to them both as korua if i was talking to my sister and her her family so her husband and kids i'd refer to them as koto so i'm sort of talking to these people and it's the same association as a teacher say talking to kids and that's why i think kids in kindergarten for me is a, a good little trigger for that because it represents the teacher talking to other people and again you've got the k there that relates to goto and korua that's it together me and my mum run away kids in kindergarten there are four ways that I can use, they're four words and phrases that I can use as triggers for learning these personal pronouns in Te Reo Māori. Let me know what you think of this video. Have a think about how you can relate certain words to these personal pronouns. And let me know down in the comments section what triggers, what word triggers and what word or phrase triggers you've come up with to help you learn these words in Te Reo Māori. Good luck.